Metroid is such a cool series, but god damn is it brutal. The dark, desolate, almost horror-themed aesthetic just draws you into this unique world. It's a series where you're meant to feel lost and alone, with seemingly no sense of where to go next. And, well, that's part of the reason why I've never felt able to get into these games. Ask anyone. Getting lost sucks. It's frustrating, and it's something I found myself doing a lot of whenever I attempted to pick up a Metroid game. Now, I'm gonna save you the time of typing up a comment because, yes, I am terrible at video games. And probably just need to get good, but I know I'm not alone in feeling this way about Metroid. It's a series that has a concept that sounds incredibly interesting on paper, but in practice only appeals to a very niche audience. This is a shame because I've desperately wanted to become a Metroid fan for years now, but have never been able to finish a game in the series simply due to how cryptic these games can get. So I guess that's just how it is then. I just have to accept the fact that the Metroid series isn't for me. and. Probably never will be. Alright, I guess I can give it one more chance. After over five years of lying dormant, Samus was finally back with yet another Metroid 2 remake. During E3 2017, people were all over Metroid Prime 4, which was also just announced. But I had my sights set more on this game. Everything about it just seemed like it made for the perfect entry point into the series for me. It featured more refined controls, a cohesive map system, and a big old easy button that basically told you, Look, you dense motherfucker, go here. So I picked up the game and, well, I finished it. I actually finished a Metroid game. Hell, I even found it extremely hard to put down at times. But I couldn't help but wonder what exactly about this game won me over. At its core, it's definitely still a Metroid game. So why was it Metroid 1, Metroid Prime, or hell, even Super Metroid able to grip me like this game did? Well, why don't we take a closer look and see if we can find out. One thing I feel every Metroid game is consistent at is setting the mood for what's to come. Every game has this gripping intro sequence that just pulls you into the experience. Even in the original NES game, the title screen with its eerie, unsettling music perfectly sets the tone for the game. These intro sequences are a huge part of the reason I even want to get into the series so badly. And thankfully, Metroid Samus Returns is no exception to this. This opening cinematic does an absolutely amazing job of immersing the player into the world of Metroid. But more importantly, it's extremely effective at getting you caught up with what's happened in the series thus far. Remember, this is a remake of the second game in the series, but this game doesn't expect you to have finished the original Metroid before playing this one. No, it quickly gives you all the information you need to fully understand this game's plot and then immediately cuts to the chase. I feel any franchise that features a plot that spans multiple entries can easily shy away potential newcomers. Take Kingdom Hearts for example. The newest game in the series, Kingdom Hearts 3, looks absolutely amazing. But <laughs> good luck jumping into that game without playing the 40 other sequels first. This is a prime example of what's made the Metroid series so difficult for me to get into. Who the heck is Ridley? What is the Galactic Federation? Why are Metroid so important to the series? These are all questions I was expected to have already known the answer to prior to playing past Metroid games. And since I wasn't aware of any of the lore surrounding these games, I wasn't able to properly immerse myself into the experience. Samus Returns, on the other hand, doesn't pull any punches with explaining the series' lore. The space pirates are bad, and are trying to weaponize a species known as Metroid. Samus was successful at thwarting the Space Pirates' plans, but must now exterminate every last Metroid to truly bring peace to the galaxy. Now, to be fair, Super Metroid also does a similarly amazing job at bringing the player up to speed with its intro, but I feel where Samus Returns gets the slight edge at being more accessible to newcomers is the fact that it only needs to summarize the events of one game, as opposed to Super Metroid having to cover the plots of two whole games. This makes Samus Returns' intro feel a little less overwhelming and easier to digest in my opinion.
Once I arrived on planet SR388, I found myself immediately immersed into the atmosphere of this game. This planet has a very gloomy, almost somber feeling to it. That paired with the ambient music gives the surface of SR388 this mystical aesthetic that I instantly fell in love with. However, it's not all sad and depressing, as a faint melody can be heard in the background that provokes a sense of thrill and adventure. They say first impressions are everything, and wow, did this game make an amazing first impression on me. Be that as it may, this has been true for all of the Metroid games I've played up until this point. They completely blow me away with the introduction and opening of the game, then I hit that part. You all know the part I'm talking about. The part in any Metroid game where you hit a literal wall with no clear way of how to progress. This sudden halt in progression just causes my previous feelings of excitement to transform more into a feeling of frustration and annoyance, as I'm forced to backtrack throughout the entire map in hopes of finding a way forward. Metroid Samus Returns says to hell with all that. It gives you an ability called the Scan Pulse, which reveals the surrounding map and shows you which walls are destructible. This ability was a godsend for a Metroid newcomer such as myself, since I never had to be afraid of becoming lost in this game. Starting out, I'm not gonna hide the fact that I was pretty reliant on this ability. Whenever I'd feel stuck or lost, I could just activate it and have a clear idea of if I'm heading in the right direction or not. But something happened towards the end of Area 2 in the game that surprised me. I wasn't using this ability at all anymore. In fact, I was able to find everything from this point onwards completely on my own, and I was loving it. The scan pulse acted sorta of like a pair of Metroid training wheels for me. I was free to use it for as long as I needed, but just as a child one day outgrows their training wheels, I outgrew this ability. It allowed me to fully appreciate the game and all of its quirks without the frustrations I'd experienced in past games. Once I was able to get a grip on how everything was structured, I started to really notice just how well designed this game is. Everything here has a purpose. Even though you're allowed to venture down multiple paths, there never really is a wrong way to go. Even when you feel you've hit a dead end, you'll usually find something useful such as a missile upgrade or even a new ability if you search hard enough. Additionally, these new teleportation points make backtracking a complete non-issue here. That paired with the extremely detailed map makes it so I never felt lost or disoriented, which I found to be a huge problem for myself in previous Metroid games. After I found a few upgrades, I started to realize just how genius the pacing of this game is. For example, throughout the game, you'll come across these large sprawling rooms. Now, early on, you'll gain access to the spider ball, which allows you to cling to walls to traverse these areas. However, after a while, you'll soon notice just how slow the spider ball can be. But just as you're starting to get annoyed by this, you'll find the space jump. Now you're free to infinitely jump to explore these large areas, which completely nullifies the limitations the spider ball had. Another example is with these turrets that you find in Area 3. These things are extremely intimidating, as they seem to absorb all of your shots and dish out a devastating amount of damage. However, after you struggle to make your way past all these turrets, you'll come across the Beam Burst, which not only enhances your attack power, but also allows you to rapid fire. Now, those turrets that were giving you trouble? Neat. It's this formula of presenting the player with a difficult situation, then later introducing an upgrade which allows them to easily overcome those situations, that makes Samus Returns feel so satisfying to play. I understand that this is a formula that's present in every Metroid game, but the quality of life improvements that Samus Returns introduced to the series just makes this all so much more enjoyable for me as a newcomer. Things like the scan pulse ability, the detailed map that's always available to you on the bottom screen, or being able to easily teleport back to past areas are all examples of the bold steps Samus Returns takes towards making 2D Metroid more open to everyone, while also keeping the heart of the franchise intact. A series which once felt intimidating for me to even attempt to get into, now has me eager for more. But will what I learned here allow me to finally enjoy past Metroid games? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out.
But what do you think of Metroid Samus Returns? Do you feel like it succeeds in making the series more accessible to newcomers? Let me know in the comments and be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and if you're looking for something else to watch, hey, why not check out my last video on the top 10 best Super Smash Bros. reveals? It's a pretty fun video. At least, I think so. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.